In this video, I will show you a method to create any kind of puzzle in Blender. I used it a few days ago to create the still visuals for the incredible Last Supper puzzle by 1000. You will just need your puzzle art, a vector template to cut your puzzle, which I will also show you how to create, the free and open source vector graphics editor Inkscape to edit the template, and obviously Blender in a version that allows geometry nodes. But don't worry, we will only use one node in it. First, if you don't have a vector template of your puzzle, you can go to puzzle.telegnum.org to generate one. Here I am going for 1000 pieces, so let's make it 50 by 20 pieces, and I just edit the size a bit so that they are not so squished. When you are done, download the SVG. The vector file you just downloaded contains only the lines as vector path. Now the goal is to extract the shape of the pieces from those vector lines. You could do it in Blender, with a lot of messing around with boolean modifiers and curve edits, but I find that it doesn't always work on 2D shapes like those. So my workaround is to use Inkscape, which is way better with boolean operations in 2D, in order to cut a rectangle following the puzzle cutting lines from your SVG to get all the pieces. In Inkscape, open your SVG template. The template for Telegnum is a single vector object, which is perfect, but if your template is made out of separate lines grouped together, make sure to ungroup them under the object tab and join everything in a single object under path and combine. This method can also work with manufacturer file and way more interesting cutting patterns like the one used in 1000 Last Supper puzzle. The first thing we will do is choose our cutting width because we won't be able to change that later. So make something coherent with the size of your puzzle so that the gap between all pieces is around 0.1mm. Then we will bake the width by converting the stroke to path. Go to path and set stroke to path. Now let's create a rectangle the size of our puzzle. Make sure it has no outline and send it to the bottom. To cut the pieces, select the rectangle and the cutting lines, and under path, select difference. Now separate all pieces, under path and break apart, and we are left with all our puzzle pieces. Save your SVG file and import it in Blender. We have all our individual puzzle pieces, however, some are filled unpredictably, so let's fix that. Select them all in the outliner, and under Object, Data Properties, while pressing Alt to edit all the objects at once, set Fill Mode to None. That way, we have all our outlines. The easiest way I found to convert them to mesh with coherent faces is to go to the Geometry Nodes tab, with one piece selected, add the Geometry Node modifier, and simply add a Fill Curve node, set to Triangle, and that's it. Select all the puzzle pieces, with Ctrl plus L, copy the modifier to all pieces, and apply it to each piece by converting everything to meshes. Don't forget to set the origin of each piece by going to Object, Set the Origin, and Origin to Center of Mass. And we have a bunch of perfectly meshed puzzle pieces. With one piece selected, add three materials, one for each side plus the edge. I just changed the viewport display color to see them more easily. Add a solidify modifier and edit the material offset to apply the corresponding material to each part. Select all pieces and with Ctrl L link the materials and copy the modifiers. Finally, to apply your puzzle design, select all pieces, go into edit mode Go to the top view by clicking on the Z-axis, select everything with A and press U and click on Projects from View Bound. That way, all pieces are mapped on a proper UV space from 0 to 1 with their correct positions. In the shader editor, you can add your design to the top side material and it works perfectly. Also, if you are using cycles, you can add some slight bevel effect on the top material with the bevel node for a bit more realism. 
Now to make your shots, you can easily play around with proportional editing to do some kind of wavy movements to the pieces. But we can also do that non-destructively, the same way we did with the playing cards in one of the most recent videos, with this simple geometry node setup. Put all the pieces in a collection on the side, add some geometry and a geometry node setup to it, drag in your puzzle pieces collection, and do some quick instance location and rotation edits to make everything more interesting. Starting from this, you can go pretty nuts with the movement of the pieces while being entirely procedural. Hope that was useful to some of you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you learned something. And see you next time.